This week, Drew Nelson and myself discuss the interesting year that we call 2020 and what we look forward to happening in our premium cigar industry in 2021. Predictions, brand excitement, potential product launches. It will all be discussed as we get ready to wrap up another crazy year. Each of us will deliver what brands that we're looking forward to and who we think is going to make moves right here. On episode 349 of Stogie Geeks, who's going to make the moves? Who's going to sink? Who's going to swim? Who's going to fly? Who's going to crash? All of that will be discussed with our predictions right here on episode 349 of Stogie Geeks. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you. You got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to Stogie Geeks episode 349. I am your host, Joe Zempa. It is that wonderful, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Where we get to do predictions and talk about what's going on as we get ready to wrap up. Uh, I, I like this schedule for Stogie Geeks, like th- this time of the year and when we kick off the new year on the other end. Because we get to talk about who we think is going to make some moves, who's not. We might get into a little bit of that top 25. If not, we'll definitely do that after the first of the year uh, as well. I am your host, Joe Zempa. Thank you for tuning in to Stogie Geeks. We have Mr. Drew Galvin, the little dark-haired kid from Texas, who is joining us remotely. <coughs> Drew, what's up, buddy? Man, I've been on hiatus for a long time. This Texas lockdown's got me going nuts. So uh, here we are uh, reporting to you from the uh, work dungeon. Um, everything's been going very well. We're uh, a little bit of a cold snap and here in the, uh, Texas, in the great Texas state, but... Uh, whether that's surviving and smoking stogies and enjoying some whiskeys. What you about go. you guys? There you go. Hold on. We have uh, who is joining us remotely, kind of, sort of. It is Nelson. What's up, stogie geeks? Nelson. Ooh, it, look, it looks like that Texas lockdown grows here. I got to come down there. Oh, yeah. That's true. You might want to. Nelson, uh, Story geeks. Nelson, last time you were on Story geeks, I got thrown out of a cigar shop. Uh, are we gonna go there? Oh, I'm. Gonna, oh, go? oh, oh, oh! You mean the stick police? You mean the oh, stick yeah. police? You need the stick police? Another freaking person questioned my integrity. I'll tell you, that's 2021. Integrity. That's 2020 for you. Um, <laughs> the good news is I only pissed off two people in the industry. Last year was three, so I'm getting better. Um, true. You know, may- maybe we won't have any more crybabies on the show. That'd be cool. <laughs> and uh, and we'll move forth from there. So Nelson, I'm you know I'm I'm excited to uh, see you after the show. 
and um, connect with you. Drew, I can't even wait to see you after COVID. Um, I just want to give you a hug. So I'll give you a virtual that's, hug, bro. Okay. That's going to be a big cool. show. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's going to be an awesome show. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe we'll like film it on Facebook Live and call it a real podcast like, like everyone else. That'd be cool. Right, and and then there you go. But uh, yeah, so um, twenty twenty crazy year. Uh, I remember um, this year when it started, and like everyone else, uh, we had no clue what we were in for for the end of Q one. And some of us have survived. Some of us have thrived. Some of us have adapted. Some of us has done well. Uh, let's just jump right into it, guys. I, I want to have a, a discussion. Usually, during um, no, no pandemic times or, or, or lockdowns and shutdowns, uh, we I have historically done on this show like what I look forward to, um, what what companies, what type type of events am I looking forward to happening in the next year. Um, but let's do a little bit of a review of this year and what we're looking forward to for next year. And uh, who, whichever one of you guys want to go first, go for it. I, I first want to say that that Patriots hat is really, really, that's a poor choice in hat wear today. I think so. Oh, that hat is fire. <laughs> well, you know. That's a fire hat right there. You know what's kind of cool? You know what's kind of cool about this hat? <laughs> I have a Patriots visor that I wear in the summer when I golf and all that crap. And now it's like. No one but busts my chops. Like, oh, yeah, Patriots, you like Tom Brady. It's like, dude, no, I really didn't ever like Tom Brady, um, mm. for sure. Um, you know, but then again, uh, as a Yankee fan, I never really liked A-Rod or Giambi either. And, oh, you mean I'm not a dude. But anyway, um, I, think the Patri- I think the Patriots, the Patriots, every once in a while, like everything else uh, in life, it's just your turn. And, and sometimes mm. it's not your turn. And yeah. that's why it's it's a good lesson to learn that for people. Like, enjoy what you have. Enjoy the blessings that you have of the day. But I think the Patriots would be all right. All right. You know? I'll let you, I'll, I'll let you have it this time since we're uh, uplifting the uh, Patriot world over there in the uh in Nah, the believe me. It's all good, man. <laughs> I mean, it's all good. I, I, somebody's got to say something. So it's yeah. cool. But who's going Alec, first? So Alec and Bradley, you want me to go first? You go, I'll hit it uh, it's up to Nelson. He's in charge. Okay, Nelson. Go ahead, Nelson. You're in charge. Actually, do we have any news? Because I'm kind of behind on the news. No, Nelson. Well. Nelson's not doing news today. Because because if we don't let Nelson go first, he's going to threaten us and leave uh, and start his own podcast. So um, no. Yeah. He's got a no compete clause, doesn't he? Yeah. He, no, he, he doesn't to use a computer. Nelson, we can't hear you, bro. You need to turn yourself off mute. Hello. Macaroni salad. All right, love it. All right, there we go. Sorry, all right. it's all right. There Let's start go. this over. So, Nelson, when are you gonna start your own podcast and compete against Story Geeks? It's already in the works. <laughs> nice. It's, it's gonna be great. I, <laughs> Drew and I are working out a contract. <laughs> oh, Drew, Drew too. Cool. I like it. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> I like it. Wait yeah. A minute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> no one can replace hey, Johnny. I like it. But I, I Listen, do have news brother. in my back pocket always, in case Joe wants it. Always oh no, news. Drew wants news. Go for it. Give us some news, uh, Drew. You want yeah. news? Yeah, I was just saying, little brother, big brother. Let's play nice today. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, I no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. I'm just I'm digressing at this point. Move on. Let's go, Nelson. <laughs> yeah, Nelson, give us some riv- riveting news. Oh, you really want news? Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, well, I, I actually caught this this morning. Hold um, on, ladies and gentlemen. Nelson has news. I know. I'm still waiting for Johnny to give me like a little. Doo, 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 We're working doo, 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 on like, it. You know? I'm still. I'm still waiting to take care of the promo, the the intro. You know yeah, what I mean? The, yeah. The news intro. It's it's got like a ghost on it. A, a, a Paul Azadorian ghost. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nelson, give us uh, news. Come passed. on. All right, I'm trying here. I'm trying. Um, Hurry up, bro. Saka is uh, rolling out the Red Meat Lovers again, uh, coming out next year, and he's teaming up with Smoke In on that one. So it will only be available from Smoke In. Yep. Uh, they're going to be coming out in boxes of 10. There'll be $12 a piece, to, So and there's only 600 boxes uh, coming out of those. And I know the last time, I think it was 2019, I think it was last year they came out with the uh, Red Meat Lovers. I think it sold out, and it was one of those sought-after sticks. Oh, yeah, sought So after. Um, look for that coming out next year. Uh, Saka, I got a quote from Saka that I thought was pretty cool that I captured. It says, 
you know, you're not supposed to say aloud which of your children is your favorite. He goes, screw that. This box press Toro format of the Red Meat Lovers is hands down my favorite in my line. So that's right from uh, Mr. Saka himself. So look out for that next year. Uh, that that box pressed uh, Toro that's coming out of the Red Meat Lovers. <clears throat> okay, cool. Mm. All right, Drew, let's kick us off. Yeah. Who do you think so, is going to? Uh, who do you think did good this year, and and we're looking forward to next year, or vice versa? Well, however you want to answer. I'm still going to drinking plenty of Marys. Since we're on Steve Saka, I'll, I'll go ahead and start there because he is on my list. So Steve Saka, enough said, right? Uh, Steve is a legend. DTT is without bullshit. And we all know that because Steve said it's from his mouth. You know, it's without bullshit. Um, you know, I wish more cigar boutiques or boutique cigars brands would just come out and do business just like that. Uh, DTT definitely, you know, uh, from, you know, we interviewed Steve earlier this year and he talked about how, you know, you want to, you want to play, you got to pay. That's it. You know, get your cigars, pay for them. I'll bring them to you or I'll drop ship them and uh, you guys sell them and that's it. Uh, so I like that. Uh, um, again, a quote from him is uh, more than just a passion for us. They are our life. So end quote, <clears throat> that's coming again from the soccer brand. Uh, great business practices, uh, principles. Uh, you're not going to see this company bulking and shifting uh, to keep their, uh, their cigars in your face. Uh, every time DTT releases a cigar, it's like a fart in a wind. You sniff around for it, and then next thing you know, it's fucking gone because his cigars fly off the shelf. Because people know good quality comes from less words and more action, and that's what you get in Steve Saka cigars. Um, okay. So, you know, for me, like I said, uh, uh, you know, every time I turn around, and try to buy something that Steve just released. And trust me, I, when I I seen the Meat Lovers and I saw some of the other uh, offerings that were just released, they were sold the fuck out like like that. And I'm like trying to call, trying trying to get somebody somewhere to try to get me some stuff, and and they're gone. So, but I'm not I'm not frustrated for that. You know, I, I love it. Uh, I like what he's got, and when I when I do get my hands on it, I'll, I'll definitely enjoy what everybody else gets to enjoy. So uh, Steve Saka for sure, DTT. Uh, there's no need for member coins, stickers, and, squa and swag. Even but though I they have like, it. Even though I like the Sasquatch, uh, the Saka Squash, because uh, it's fucking cool. But, you know, I'm just saying, I mean, that that's a guy right there, you know, along with our uh, our, our following audience. You know, it's it's full of integrity. So uh, Love that Saka Squash. It was one of my prized possessions 2020. But it, it, I, got, I got two things on that. So one... Drew, definitely hit me up. I'm a huge soccer guy, so if it's something you can't get and you want, I probably have it. But number two, and Joe, I actually meant to ask you this question, and Dunbarton Tobacco is actually a great example of this. At what point does a company stop being boutique and starts becoming more of a mainstream cigar company? Because it, to me, and I don't know the definition of this, I'm admitting this, but in my opinion, I don't know that Dunbarton is really – a boutique company anymore, uh, but I'm wondering what you know what Joe thinks about that. Nelson, are you really trying to get me like fired or uh, in <laughs> more trouble? Yes, yes. Jesus. <sighs> I, first of all, I appreciate the question, right? I appreciate the question. As you, as your story geeks listeners know, um, I don't. The, my co-host or uh, interviewees don't email me questions and whatnot. Um. As far as show prep, but that's a great question, and I will answer it with the fullest integrity and 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 honesty um, for sure. But that question is not up to me to answer. But I will answer it because you asked me, and if you want to have a candid discussion about anything in this industry, uh, I certainly have the balls to look you and the industry in the face and say, "Yo, this is." My opinion. And again, the expressive views of this opinion do not respect story use management and or its staff. However, the Boutique Cigar Association had a podcast on this um, about defining boutique, right? And, and you know, the, the, I don't want to go poo-poo on anything that they do. I think it's a super cool movement, but I don't understand why we need to categorize stuff, right? Mm-hmm. 
Um, I don't understand why, and this happens a lot, especially now with COVID. Like, like you know, um, you know, we got to find like little groups to get our message across to have a bigger voice and whatnot. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like if you're you, okay, and 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 you do you, that should be enough. And if that's not enough for you and your consumers, then you need to fix you. Right. Same thing with story geeks. Right. Like, like, you know, we're not going to partner and go on like another podcast network. We're not going to go over here and do that, even though we're part of another network with security. But it's, we're not like partnering it up. We're not like two podcasts and one on the same network trying to get audience, share audience like that. Like, like we're us. And that's that. Right. And so that doesn't answer the question because I'm about to answer the question. But I wanted to set the platform because I don't want to take away. If you are looking for a true definition of what boutique, Nelson, I suggest you you look up the boat. Uh, What's it called, Drew? Protecting the Legacy, off the top of my head? Is that it? Protecting the Legacy? Yeah. yeah. Go to Podcast Catcher, P- Protecting the Legacy. There's three guys over there. We've interviewed two of them, th- two of the three, right? I still got to get mm-hmm. um, Mr. Viante on, on, on yep. the show. Uh, and, you know, it, it's like it's like they spent a few episodes defining like what makes Boutique. Because even some people who qualify themselves as Boutique sell over a million sticks, right? Mm-hmm. So... My answer is, even though they don't have a, an exact definition, my definition of boutique is someone in a company that has the position and tobacco enough to pivot and be creative, but also within their current line, but I don't want to set a number on it. You know what I mean? So, so uh, that's, you know... It's it's small craft. This whole industry is a craft, but it's small herb blends that are not mass produced. And within that company, they can pivot for profile, right? So, like you know, a, a perfect example who does very very well, Eric Espinoza sells a ton mm-hmm. of cigars. Is he boutique? I mean, quite frankly, in my opinion, he's he's the borderline threshold in my opinion as far as mm-hmm. volume and all that. But he still has that like like small mystique craft. Let me go in depth, you know, not only I'm going to do the 601 La Bamba, I'm going to go this with the wick, or I'm going to go deeper Launch. with stick. Yeah, exactly, LeBron, right? right. So he goes, mm-hmm. so it's a company that goes deeper within their line, but stays small enough for craft to pivot within the line. Does that make sense, Nelson? Did I articulate yeah, that? Yeah, I actually liked your earlier answer where I, where I thought you were going was, why do we, and you did actually say it, is, you know why are there categories? It, it's it's just a cigar, right? Yeah, yeah. But well, know, but- well, you know why they want to have categories is because because they 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 want a voice, right? And at the right. time, Predex, uh, which my prediction, you know, and everybody told me I was off my rocker, including other podcasts and other manufacturers since twenty fourteen, right? Like. You know, when Predex was there, like they were going to have to have some sort of a movement to have a voice heard if the FDA came down on that type of stuff. So they kind of formed and, and then and then did did their line. But like there are some super cool brands that are boutique, but there are some ultra boutique as well uh, oh, yeah. there, you know, oh, but, definitely. But, but the beer and the wine and the craft industry. They're the same, even the quilt industry, right? I know people who make, they make quilts, right? And you could buy an Afghan, not an Afghan, like a quilt and have it crafted and all that stuff. And a guild can make it and, and all like it, 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 it it's wherever you want to take it, but you can pivot within the business model to go deeper in your brand. Now, I don't know if they go deeper in the brand because maybe that's the only tobacco that they can get their hands on. Right. You know, the argument can go two ways, right? right? Well, they're boutique because this is all they can buy or all they can get their hands on for this. And the bigger guys have bigger purchasing power and all the economies of scale that kind of go with that. Or the other argument is, hey, they want to hone their craft and go deeper with inside their brand. So deeper inside your yep. brand is my answer. Um but you shouldn't have to define yourself as boutique. And then Yeah, I like that answer best. Dunburton, like I mean, you know, I, you know, Saka, I don't want to put words in his mouth or 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 ever speak for him, but from my experience with interview with, with having him on the show and whatnot, you know, you've gone from a bigger corporate company 
to now mm-hmm. something smaller. I mean, he, he right. admitted he's clearly much smaller. Is he boutique? doesn't matter if he produces 4 million sticks. If the company's small and, 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 and can pivot quickly, in other words, he can create this stick, this stick, that stick quicker than the bigger guy, then I, and you want to hone in on your craft and experiment with stuff a little bit better than or a little bit more efficiently uh, than some of the big guys and call yourself boutique. Knock yourself out. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, with Sokka, like I said, you know, I mean, he's just he's got that he's got that that no nonsense and and that and that and, and it it just it 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 um really resonates with everybody across the United States, I think. And that's I could talk to people in Hawaii, I could talk to somebody in Germany, and that I mean when we talk about cigars on our own private conversations i mean you know these 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 names come up very consistently and so i think dunburton and tobacco would will, will definitely you know like i said i don't nothing i need to think about he's fucking doing it and that's so so is. drew you're looking forward to dunburton and tobacco and trust doing some super cool stuff in 2021 well, yeah. I mean, he's gonna okay. he's gonna have his he's gonna have his red meat out. Uh, not his red meat, but hey, no. the red meat cigars. <laughs> Steve, if you're listening, I'm sorry I meant it that way, but that's not what I meant. Uh, no, but I mean, yeah, you can expect him to definitely, uh, you know, shell out these these cigars, uh, you know, and and what and and his uh, regular uh, rep, you know, and how he's been doing it. I think it's been like every three to four months something has uh, peaked, and he's ready to announce it and get it out there and uh i'm 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 jockeying myself and my buying team <laughs> well, to make is... sure that we grab that we grab stuff while it's there and 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 and, 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 and at the same time I and mean, it, it's available it's just that his stuff sells a lot quicker than most i mean of course it, it does because it's because it's limited run and why and by right. the way and by the way right. hats off like uh, which is better nelson right. Your news. How many boxes off the top of my head? I forgot what you said. Well, so... 600? Does that this take, one was 600. Okay, but I okay. Was well, okay. Stop, stop right there. So I, I want to okay. prove a point. I want to keep right. the show moving, right? Right? Six. Which is better? Se- selling 600 boxes or... Which go, okay? Which now, now it's cost clear, right? So in other words, uh, he sold them to the retail store or cigar club outlet or wherever... They got in the consumer's hands. They're now gone and sought after, traded on the mm-hmm. aftermarket forums and all the crazy stuff that you belong to, Nelson, mm-hmm. and, and sought after. Or having 1,200 sticks and only six of them go and you're still sitting on inventory, which didn't cost a clear, which is a better business model. It's a, that You're going to see a lot yeah. of that. You're going to see when I do my 2021 prediction more towards the end of the show, please don't let me forget this right yeah. right when i do you're, you're that's one of two predictions overall in the industry that i have you're gonna see a lot more small batch stuff going out the door and by the way the big guys oh, yeah. who have some of my votes who i'm gonna vote for here in 2021 right or not yeah. really vote for but talk about right yeah. um the big guys are gonna mimic that business model because it's cost clear it makes money Right. You don't have distribution problems. <laughs> you don't have to worry about distribution. You're not going to worry about your sales rep in freaking Oklahoma who who sold 10 boxes but only five can ship. You only got to worry about freaking, you know, the batch go. You, all those problems go away when you when you're smaller. Well, that's what and 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 and, and what and what's, you know, with that, I mean, that Miami cigar and company, that announcement they made over a week ago. I mean, that right there just shows you. I mean, that right what you're just saying, that's already that's already happening. They're doing it with a company like that, or they're you know sure, and 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 you don't even know like like when I own the cigar shop, we didn't have reps, we didn't have cigar reps. We called freaking out of turf J C Newman and said we need these boxes. We yeah. called um, Miami Cigar and said we need you. We didn't have a rep. Like it's crazy. It's crazy. You get the rep, and then we have, and then we all have events because you know. The brainiacs that 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 own cigar shops. Oh, we're gonna have a meet the rep party, and we're gonna do buy three get one free. Like, dude, it's a freaking ten dollar stick. You're gonna buy three get one free. People are gonna fly. Like, yeah, the first year people want to meet the rep. Sure, there are some reps that have a following, yeah. but they but they only have a following here because they created a category of stuff. Or maybe they're super cool dudes or gals to hang out with. Yep. 
Yeah, you, know you, I mean? see you don't need nipples. Always... You know, you know, some companies have nipples and cleavage all over yeah. the place. Freaking trying to freaking get <laughs> there Facebook, it is. To get Facebook freaking views and whatnot. Right? It's like, dude, it's like freaking, dude. Like, you know, if you want to see nipples, I've been working out. I mean, I'll give you like a shot if you uh, if you want. I mean, you know, I, I, no one wants to see that. I, I don't know, man. I've been freaking boxing again, so freaking, you know, let's do it. You know, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, like, like, I, I don't know. And, and I have mixed feelings about about Miami's decision in, with there. But let's yeah. face it, man. Like, you don't know what their numbers are. You don't know what they got going on by the scenes. You don't know if they're sitting on a boatload of inventory and freaking. Well, you don't know uh, if, if, if the sales reps are freaking outperform, but they're paying them higher and they got distribution. Like, you don't know. You know what I mean? Well, and, then, I, and the problem is everybody in this freaking industry who has a microphone or a Facebook freaking live freaking account and thinks it's a podcast freaking turns right. around and freaking, you know, says like, you like, you know, get, get them on the show and talk about why you would you would do that. And what, why was that a business right. model? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. The re I mean, the whole the whole reorganization of the company's business model, the changes are going to include restructuring of their field operations, management positions. And a fact, uh, you know, basically affecting the whole uh, divisions of their of their company. Uh, I mean, man, that's a major. I mean, you know, is it a COVID thing? Is it is it just that they're seeing all these other businesses pivot and now they're trying to catch up? You know, dare, so I, to, so dare we speak? say? Dare I say? Because I piss everybody off in the industry anyway. Dare I say? Is it a freaking country thing? Right. Is Nicaragua kicking the crap out of freaking Dominican freaking for demand? Is is that is that is that is that a is that a legitimate factor? I I I can tell you that, uh, and I've been saying this over and over. Nicaragua, Nicaragua, the the the, the consumers speak of it, so it has yeah. to repivot, and it's gotta you gotta figure that all out, and they gotta figure that all out. So is Miami on your 2021 hot list, Drew? I'm just gonna be yeah, I'm gonna be watching that that. Uh, closely just kind of just seeing uh you know i have some friends here in texas noel rojas <laughs> who's who's rewriting the book uh cigar industry you know business um you know you and i both know that we, we've talked with him we've we've seen him in action and you know what his you know what his his repertoire is about you know self-educating and just going with it and 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 moving forward so i mean there's a lot of things and I, I just want to see how this is going to wash out, so to speak. But, uh, yeah, very interesting that they have to, wow, basically reorganize the entire companies. Do you want to stay on Miami? Because a component of Miami uh, is one of my watch out for for 2021. So I like to keep the show yeah. moving. Yeah. Uh, yeah one of my predictions is like La Aurora. Like, La Aurora. like mm -hmm. yeah. Like, like you know. They produce a Nicaraguan stick, okay, with the La Aurora 107 Nicaragua, okay? Yeah. And the local jabroni macaronis we speak to in the shop, like, yeah, it's all right, it's all right. Dude, do you understand what this is? Like, it's a, it's a successful transition from a company that has historically been uh, done everything Dominican until now. Mm -hmm. And, and, and a couple have tried and failed. Failed from a consumer demand perspective. Romeo and Julieta comes to mind. Okay? A couple have tried and collaborated. Right? What was the stick? I have it. It's in my thing. AJ and it's brand new. AJ and somebody. Nelson, help me out. Uh, let's see. Brand new. Fernandez. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, I don't remember. AJ Fernandez in some way? Johnny or Gustavo, can you look in my black humidor? And it's right on top. Just shoot me the name in my head. I'm having a brain fart. Right? It, it's in my black humidor on my desk. Yeah. It's it's AJ and somebody off the top of my head. All right? Uh, John, nah, John, don't worry uh, about it. We'll keep it going. Hey, hey, we can make things happen here. Right? They're just, just going to bucket it in my ear and they'll get it. Live show. Live show. It's a live show. Oh. It's fine. Right? So so anyway, like, like, <laughs> like you know. Uh, is La Aurora going to look at making more? It says AJ Fernandez on it. It's right on top, and it's a collaboration. It's not in another one. It's Red Label, Goose. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Goose, our producer, doesn't know a lot about cigars, but he's a great producer. He's Johnny's. <laughs> there you go. He oh, okay, great. Oh, perf. Oh, 
Oh my God! It even proves my point. So Romeo and Juliet mm-hmm. it does a collaboration with AJ Fernandez to do that after Romeo and Juliet really didn't have a well sought after Nicaraguan transition when they're known for for Dominican. Thus proving right. my point. Thank you, Goose. Right. So so it's like it's like it's like you know. So you're gonna see that collaboration. You're gonna see that there. And Manuel and Noah successfully did it. It's a great blend. I've had that blend, and it doesn't break the bank. Super cool blend. Are they going to come out with something new? I venture to say that that they might start messing around with some more N- Nicaraguan type stuff, right? Uh, right. Uh, in in there, which they're historically known known for, obviously being from Dominica, right? So or being a Dominican cigar. So therefore, looking very forward to what they're going to do in twenty twenty one. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. All right, Nelson. There he is. Sorry, here I am. Um, <laughs> my first was to say, I know, just like mute, off mute. Yeah. Whack-a-mole. Yeah, it's Whack-a-mole. wicked hard. It's like whack-a-mole. <laughs> uh, my first was also Saka, so I'll, I'll, I'll only add, because uh, Drew has already said um, some stuff about it, and I don't want to repeat what he said. But, I mean, the reason I picked on Barton, um, I, see, I actually don't think they, they do do small batches. Yes, they do. But. He has a lot of stuff that isn't, and it's and it's great, which led me to that question. But, yep. you know, he came out with the Brule uh, Blue this year. Um, you know, that had thousands of sticks, and, and, and that thing sold out. And it was amazing. Like, I, I really enjoyed that that cigar. Uh, he just came out with the Mi Carida Firecracker. Mm. Um, he had the, the Blue Band one, I think it was last year, and this, this year is the Red Band one. And, and, and that was fantastic. And he just... Everything that man put, it's the only brand, and yes, call me a fanboy, whatever, but it is the only brand I enjoy every single cigar. So I am stoked to see what Saka has coming up in 2021, because if, if this year was any indication, I'm, we're going to have some great, great smokes next year. And I, I even went, as, I got so nerdy about it. I was even looking because he, he gets most of his stuff from Nicaragua. So I was looking and, you know, they've had the hurricanes and a cyclone down there. And, you know, the tobacco for the future may be affected a little bit, uh, but they have ton, tons of each tobacco that was not impacted. Um, they do have the tobacco from this year that was not impacted. It's the stuff that was kind of growing. So, you know, in a year or two, there may be an impact as a result of what happened. So there's plenty of tobacco for Steve to work with. So I'm, I am totally stoked to see what he comes out with uh, next year. Oh yeah. yeah, and 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 you know something, he he reminds just from speaking with him is one of those dude like he, his brain doesn't stop right. His brain doesn't stop. It reminds me a lot. Of, you know, has a lot of qualities like a Nes Placencia, right? Uh, you know, with within their craft, like a Noel Ro, like 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 a Noel Rojas, like like the brain just doesn't stop because they legitimately love what they do. Right, it's the same with me. Right, like, 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 you know, I legitimately love like where I am, position wise, job wise, what I do, and my brain don't stop. You know what I mean? Like, I always want to like try to do better at whatever thing I'm doing in or out of 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 Stogie Geeks and 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 stuff like that. And your brain doesn't stop. And yeah, I, I he's like a mad scientist, dude. Like, and and, and by the way, you kind of have to be a mad scientist, like 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 you know, like Manuel and Noah. You know what I mean? Like, like Aurora's produced some super cool stuff, man. You know, consumers love it, right? Uh, you know, d- uh, what is like really terrible that they have? Like, I mean, n- there, there isn't there isn't a lot. You know what I mean? Like, they they all have their place, and they've done well, right? Nesta, same thing, rolls a lot of people's stuff. Alec Bradley's got some some good gems in there and whatnot. Yeah, you got a few. M- misses and stuff like that but you know you you it, it, it's all about the journey and i think now with these podcasts that are all sprouting out and social media and influencers and all of that type stuff like it, it, it's like we, we get the information faster and we get it all mixed up sometimes because it's all we're as consumers we're getting smashed with it right and you know yeah. as stogie geeks right you guys are on the the, the press release email we get the press release and then right. I look and like I literally notice that like other vendors, they just copy and paste the press release and put that out as news. And it's like, all right, cool. Yeah, that's how the industry works. That's how a lot of industry works. I've I've done many press releases with with 
within my career and 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 stuff like that but it's like you know at the end of the day like like he's passionate about what he does like truly truly like like mad scientist and wants to push the boundaries which is great i think from a consumer perspective that's why everybody loves him cool all right drew give us another one noel rojas <clears throat> yes oh come so on we all know we all know noel <laughs> rojas well what do you mean whoa whoa whoa, whoa. let's stop what what do you mean oh come on because he's got it's like we have the same exact one <laughs> I sent you my list, brother. I sent you my list. No, dude, it's who you like. It's it's what you like. Yeah. I know. I think I actually this no. is perfect, right? It means we all have similar. Yeah. Well, similar good. Likes. That means yeah. we can talk about more stuff as we during the show time that we have. So perfect. Yeah, I, this is actually yeah. great. Yeah. And, right, and for me, uh, yeah, what I'm going to say about Noel is this: Noel is defiantly taking the small ring gauge to the top. Why defiantly? People may ask, because that's a bold move. I mean, that was a bold move that a few years ago, I've heard. Other bigger, larger cigar companies say, "I'm not going to do that because I feel like I'm cheating the consumer out of a out, out of to, you know uh, value in the in, in, in the cigar." I'm like, really? And you know, and I've heard that multiple times. But here we go. You have Noel Ross. No one in the world would take on the small gauge uh, uh, cigar to the top. Um, so this veteran of cigar rolling maker. Uh, blender decided why not him and guess what everybody is taking notice everyone is taking notice uh, Noel has and will forever be evolving in the cigar industry because not nonchalant and stagnant has no place in his cigars uh dna in his cigar dna uh business it does in retail shops here in the <laughs> northeast yeah. <laughs> you know how many freaking i'm like oh yeah she's getting real else. Ah, i want to bring it in i know you don't want to make money as a retail shop i get you go All on right. Yeah, so he, you know, you won't catch him being stagnant. You won't catch him being nonchalant. He's just going to be always evolving. Uh, business acumen, knowledge of tobacco regions, and just straight no nonsense. He has sorted all of this out, it seems. So check it out for yourself because I know Noel Rojas, after all this is said and done, there will be a great book of business coming from that gentleman. Uh, and when you read it, you'll understand and be thanking the cigar gods. Uh, this OG, Noel Rojas, is part of the brother of the leaf and, you know, basically became a cigar god in our eyes. So you're looking that, forward to a great 2021 with Noel Rojas? Yeah, I, 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 I know I know, because I'm here in Texas and this is our backyard. Noel's literally right now from me, literally 12 miles from me. <laughs> uh, you know, his warehouse, his, his business, his offices and... Uh, I, I I get I get privy to understand the collaborations that are coming out with others, um, his new stuff, you know, that's that's coming and it's it's awesome. It's just fabulous what this guy has evolved to uh, once he got sorted through that through you know through the cigar industry. I mean, you know, he had his early going on and and he had to separate himself from some other things and he just. He didn't stop. He just said, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up my, you know, pick up my bags and dust off my uh, my jeans and move forward." And that's what he's done. And everybody now is like, "Wow, you know, they're giving him, uh, not giving him. He he and he, and he he didn't have to earn it, but they gave him the respect uh, anywhere he goes, anywhere in this in this country and beyond to uh, offer his offerings to y'all and to enjoy." So, but okay. yeah, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things going on uh, at the Noel Rojas Ranch, and and uh, I, I look forward uh, and very proud that you know I have him. I have access to him. You know, I, I have. I'm I'm right here. I'm in the backyard. Uh, you know, I got underground uh, uh, cigar shop here that you know they they do a phenomenal job of making sure that not only people like him and Holt and all the other guys uh, come through, uh, they get you know they they get, they get a lot of love okay nelson well my second one was noel ross as well so what I, what i'll say about that is you know he was born in cuba um obviously a master blender uh from what i read about him he actually while he was in school he would work in the tobacco fields so he basically had like a work co-op he was doing while he was in school and mm -hmm. i mean the man grew up in tobacco so you know if you ever you know joe actually i will give him credit he's the one that introduced me 
to uh, Noel's work. I uh, tried the uh, the blue bonnet. Uh, I think it was the Lancero Joe. I can't remember. Me, to Joe? Be honest. Me, What's Joe? That? Yes. Oh, no, yes. Drew. Joe Drew, Hollywood. Drew introduced me. Oh, to, get out of here. No, I, be, I BS you not. I remember Drew sent me a freaking care package. And I remember I, I tell this story. God, it was now. It's like every episode. Nelson, do you even appear on these episodes? <laughs> I've told the story a gazillion times. I called Drew, and I'm like, who the hell is this Noel Rojas guy? And he's like, dude, you interviewed him on Stucky Geeks. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. It's like, I was like, dude, like, like, you need to get him on the show stat. And he texted me his cell phone number, called him up, talked to him. Um, I have some more to add to, to that when it's my turn. Sure. But, yeah. But, yeah. So, Drew, don't thank me. I don't. Drew introduced well, dude, me. To Noel Rojas and and I uh, forever uh, uh, formatted my 2020. Yeah. So since that, so Drew, thank you, because Joe. Well, it, it's funny how it, it went full circle. Um, yeah. But I've since tried the statement, and you know both cigars were fantastic. So I mean the guy knows what he's doing. I I, I mean Joe, I we just interviewed um, Lee Marsh from Stolen Throne. Lee Marsh. Yep. You know, Noel Rojas was was the blender for that. So I mean, everything the guy touches is is great. So yeah, I I agree with you. Like this this is a guy to look out for in twenty twenty one a hundred percent. Um, I I feel like he's gonna have some great stuff coming out. Yep. Yeah. I I third. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, no we idea. we we all knew <laughs> I was gonna do the well Ross. Like you know what I mean? Like you know, and and I really think that um, it, he is 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 like you know i don't know like in boxing you look at someone and you're like okay like well you know we've always like looked at someone who was who was up and coming and you're like oh yeah well you know we, we call it like the future right it's like one of our things that we've done since we were boxing right since we were kids and 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 not that he is like an up-and-coming or or and stuff like that but um what i like about it is his craft like Dunbar and Tobacco and Trust, like it comes with tutelage as yeah. well. So, like you, you know, if you once COVID passes and and you know we can get through this, you know, might be twenty twenty two or whatever. But um, you know, like and we can go to events again, and you happen to catch him at an event, it will be like one of those events that you'll never forget. Like you know what I mean? Because with him comes with 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 tutelage, and it's not like scripted and whatnot like he's a super cool dude and like we had our story geeks interview and then like we had another hour with him uh, just us off air just do, talking about stuff and whatnot and and it, he it, he's one of those people that in a post covid era when we can physically go to events and, and meet him and do that there like he will change your um your perception of the industry and he will leave a mark on you uh, in 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 whatever way, and I think he's going to do some uh, definitely super hot to watch out for uh, for twenty twenty one. And again, you know he, he could stay smaller, right? Not in a lot of shots, but you're selling sticks, man. That's what it's about. It's about get, right. having fun, selling sticks, and doing your thing, and being you. And and that's that's it, it, total um, support and looking forward. To what he's going to come out with in 2021, no question. Awesome, cool. All right, give us some more. All right, so my next guy, or my next guys, are Alec and Bradley. Uh, Kentucky, uh, Kentucky is finally going to uh, ship uh, this, uh, or has shipped this week. And I and I say finally because I I know that you know we all know that from talking with Alec and Brad uh, Bradley about this about the delay and that was because just of what's happening with COVID and getting getting the um, the logistics together and getting that out. So these two guys, you know, these two gentlemen, I'm not going to I'm not going to call them boys. I think their dad and their grandfather are the only ones that I will I will say that have that right to do that. But these two gentlemen are uh, and their behind the scenes support team have used this year to hyper focus uh, on on any think tank ideas for their new blend developments. Uh, mm -hmm. For the upcoming year they have come out with some interesting blends and branding in the past the younger duel has certainly caught my attention when it comes to new offerings being added to their portfolios so i you know when 
Um, I've got I've got my hands on, on some of the new stuff coming out. I've already got in with the shop and told them that well, as soon as it hits the uh, doorstep to send me, you know, a, a few of the sticks. And like I said, I, these guys are continually uh, uh, looking at their tobaccos and 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 and, and thinking of the next uh, offering that they want to offer under you know their portfolio. Um, so. Uh, Kudos to them. Um, I, I they, 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 their dad has uh, their father who, who, who started the business, um, you know, um, really has two great kids or excuse me, sons uh, that um, are following in his footsteps and, and developing great things. Nelson. Nelson. Let me unmute myself. I know Wake I'm up, struggling Nelson. with the mute today. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Yeah, My I bad. know. It's, it's, it's a finger. It's the index finger. You go press it. It's pretty difficult. I know. I got fat ones. What do you want from me? <laughs> um, HVC uh, was my next pick. Um, I I personally discovered HVC this year. Um, yep. They came out with a couple of new Vitolas for the HVC 500, and, uh, the 500th anniversary. And I I forget how. I, I just Someone, I think, in a humidor recommended it. I tried hmm. it fucking stick was phenomenal so then from there you know obviously they came out with the uh the black friday recently uh they also released the hotcakes i mean every single one of those uh was fantastic i had the opportunity actually joe i can't even remember if you were there but he uh rainier was at um churchill's which is the lounge i belong to and or used to (laughs) and uh he was a great guy. I mean, I just, I really liked his passion and uh, he was asking me, you know, why I liked certain cigars. I mean, he was really all about the, the complexity and build of the cigars. And I just, I could see his attention to detail. Uh, so that to me carries over into 2021. I, I just, I, I'm really hoping they come out with some great stuff next year. I think it's definitely a, a company to watch. Um, I, I, the what was it the hot cakes i can't get enough of those uh oh, yeah. i've gone back over and over i think joe i think you've got a couple of boxes or something right yep yeah so i mean just keep an eye out for hvc i i, I think they got some good stuff coming out for sure do you ever have a hot cake in the morning are we talking about cigars yeah first the first the first yeah. stick in the morning <laughs> no i haven't <laughs> you know that dude have a hot cake in the morning when your palate yeah when your palate's fr- fresh With coffee Whatever the hell you want, you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, Bloody insects. Mary or coffee, either one, right? Yeah. Dude, the, 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 I, I agree. I, I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, HVC. Uh, certainly, um, looking forward to that. I wonder if they're gonna go like. It's so tough, right? Because you know, right now at this time of year, the Black Fridays came out. They came out every year. So, you know, you're riding on that. It's limited run. They're super tasty this year. I love the size this year, even though last year's blend was a little bit stronger, in my opinion. Um, you know, uh, and one of the, my only complaints of last of the 2019 was the size, a little bit of a ring gauge for me. But, you know, I got, you know, you can't have everything the same size. They have to go with what they want to do, um, obviously. And then this year, um, it's super tasty. It's not as strong as the 2019. Um, so when you're riding that a couple months before a hot cake hits the Northeast, right. And whatnot, you're like, yeah, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to it. I just hope that they continue to get sticks that are like of that caliber and not filler sticks. You know what I mean? Cause like I've had other sticks in their lineup and they're like, they're, they're good, but they're not like, they don't have like that wow factor. That the hot cake has, in yeah. My you're not looking for, and maybe I'm the only one, and, and maybe I'm the only one to have courage enough to say like the wow factor, right? But like you know, I, I think as consumers, we all like the wow factor. And Drew brought up a couple of a great points, and you, Nelson, like uh, you know, Drew with the Noel Rojas size and how there, but it has wow factor, and mm-hmm. and 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 you need wow factor, um. If you're not going to play the, for 70 cents more, I get a bigger stick. 
and have to go to a bigger ring gauge size, right? I, I it drives me nuts when retail owners uh, or workers, you know, tell me, well, you know, they like the bigger ring gauge because for seventy cent or 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 cigar shop patrons for that matter. Well, for seventy cents more, I get this and whatnot. It's like, dude, you're depriving <laughs> yourself of of an experience. Spend yeah. the extra seventy cents. You're spending average ten dollars, twelve dollars a stick anyway. What the hell, seventy cents, right? Because you're depriving yourself the flavor from experimenting with different sizes. That's my message to the story geeks. But you know, like you know, you don't have to go for the bigger wind gauge because you think it's getting more tobacco. I've smoked robustos, hotcakes specifically. I've taken me an hour and a half, right? You bullet yeah. cut it, right? And um, it'll take you an hour and a half to get through. If you smoke and, and bigger slower, doesn't mean better. And, and, and bigger doesn't mean better. And someone like Noel Rojas educated people, uh, oh, educates yeah. his consumers how bigger is not better and why. And we're not going to get into that, right? But, you know, um, I just hope that they can continue that wow factor with, with HVC uh, for sure. Uh, that's yeah. what I have to say about that. Drew, jumping backwards, uh, back yeah. to you, Alec and Bradley. Like, Alec Bradley, because it was under the same umbrella, so really right. I had more because it's really like a two for one, right? But Alec yeah. and Bradley was one of my um, cigar companies to watch for 2019 because they got oh, yeah. they got a lot of momentum. They got a lot yes. of momentum with that Project 40, and if you go back in the Story Geek archives of just this year, uh, mm -hmm. I smoked the Project 40 October of last year for the first time, spoke about it at the end, probably about a year ago, at least more than a year ago, right? Uh, yep. And then, and then I was like, "Wow, I wonder how it's going to be when it comes out with a Maduro." And yet here we are now, right? They're yep. coming out, they're, 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 they're launching that Project Forty Maduro uh, yep. there. Um, they have a, a, a um, Alec Bradley Q One Q Two Stogie Geeks. We are going to be having an interview of a concept that they're coming up with that I don't have the liberty to discuss on the show uh, mm -hmm. at this date um, there. But I will forever make reference to this date when I reveal what is going to be public in there. But, like, they got some super cool concepts coming out in 2021 that are going to yeah. be rolled out to us as as consumers and whatnot. And you and and you know december 4th of 2020 this review show will at least in our archives right will be forever remembered like remember when joe said like this little secretive spot and yeah. mock my words like alec bradley is going to make a boatload of noise in 2021 yes. the, the, oh, yeah. as a company and not only alec bradley with alan rubin and and what they do but the alec Alec, Ampus, and for those of you who story geeks who are listening and not watching, the ones with the mm. Ampus and are Alan's kids, Alec and Bradley. We interviewed them on the show, so you definitely want to check out that interview. It's in the archives, right? And yep. what they're coming up with, like, don't be surprised if they come up with another two sticks and then they're at five or maybe yeah. three sticks, my prediction, then they're at six and they're all different. And that's yeah. what I like about them, Alec and Bradley is their their concept there they are w the future if we we're going to use boxing lingo right That's they they, yep. they are in there and if you look at them conceptually is it boutique it's part of a bigger company you know they have access to more stuff etc cetera, etc cetera. but like alec bradley as a company in 2021 is going to have positive vibes all over mm. it and oh, yeah. let's face it the oh, 2019, you know, yeah, sure, that they're, they're in the Cigar Aficionado top 25 and all of that stuff, and they've always been players, but they're um, organically coming into a, I don't want to say a reemergence, but um, they're going to have a lot of super cool positive things coming up, um, Q1, Q2, which gets ready for the big show over at PCA, IBCPR, whatever the heck it's going to be called and if it's going to happen <laughs> virtual or whichever but mark my words yeah. december 4th of 2020 you will be hearing some super cool things happening from alec bradley as a company and certainly alec and bradley 
who's a division of 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 that company as well. Oh yeah. So they they yeah. were one of my uh, lookout for us as well. Yeah, it's it's it, it, you know like I said you know uh, going back to uh, Nelson on the HVC cigars you know uh, yeah that hot cakes man that you guys gave uh, sent me uh, I believe I had the number four uh, fifty two by four and a half. Uh, the number four man that's, that's just uh <clears throat> it is a really good cigar I've, I've already i've already purchased other ones uh you know uh to replenish my um the few that you guys sent me so a uh, good cigar uh agonosura uh, <laughs> agonosura leaf um you know they're it's out of their forms Ag- geez am i saying that wrong agonosa farms there you go there you go there you go. I've been mispronouncing um, them since 2017. So, <laughs> yeah, go great with stuff. It. Great blends. I mean, they they got some tobaccos in their portfolio that uh, that they have reached out to other manufacturers um, just from behind the scenes. Uh, people I get to speak with on my side of the world, and yeah, it's just really it's it's really super cool. I mean, they they've got some things that they have came available because other cigar manufacturers had to pull out of uh, because of the COVID uh, 19. Um, pandemic you know uh finances you know uh you know it, it, it makes a company pivot real fast you know or, or just have to abandon uh that ship so there's a lot of great tobacco that's there and i'm not saying just with them there's other farms as well um that came across this but now there's some good tobaccos available or have been some good tobaccos available for everybody to uh to to get to and source and and and, and develop a, a good blend so, but uh, HVC, yeah, very excited about them. I can't wait to see what they got coming up as well. Um, there's, you know, there's a couple things there that uh, that I wanted to get my hands on, like the San Ysidro, and I haven't been able to get a hold of those yet. But I heard down in Miami, I just got to go down there and pick some up or have somebody pick some up for me. Uh, the 500 anniversary cigar was the other one that I was looking for. Uh, just because of, of other people that I've spoken to uh, on, on other uh, forums of media, um, have led me to, uh, you know, try that stick out and see what I, see what it comes up with <laughs> on my palate. So yeah, HVC, definitely look forward to seeing them, uh, in 2021. Right. Nelson. And I don't know. I think Nelson's gone. Is he? Yeah. I don't see Did him on my screen. Restroom? Did he know. go on a potty break? I don't know. He's, he, he disappeared. Uh, there's no potty breaks. I, I don't know. He just disappeared. There's probably computer problems. He uses windows. That's first strike one right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh you gotta use Linux, I guess. Or Mac. Yeah. Maybe. But you know. So just, you want me to go into my other one then? Yeah, you go. Yeah, man. We we this is a You're pirate going? ship, bro. We keep rolling. <laughs> All right. So my last one I have on my list is just it, you know, and, and this is kind of a, a broad spectrum, but cigar box subscriptions. Um it's easy, it's convenient. Uh you click, you pay, in a week's in a week's time, voila. Your cigars are are at your doorstep. Uh, they fit the consumer need in this time and forever. I mean, I actually was. I mean, I, I still go to I still go to B and M's and and pick up my cigars and sticks because I want to say hi to people and 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 show my face and 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 talk about things or things or what and whatnot. But I mean, this is a great way. I mean, I I love it. I mean, I, I'm in love with it now. Um, I, I've cut it down to a few because I, I've got so many cigars. All right, so so for twenty twenty one, you're talking the about c- cigar subscriptions is what you're excited about. Yeah, cigar yeah, clubs. That, yeah, yeah, cigar right, clubs. Yep. Exactly. I got gotcha. you. Uh, like like I said, they they fit they, they fit the consumer need. Um, uh, there's great blends, new offerings that can be had for a fair price. Uh, Provada Cigar Club is one of them that I I've held on to. Uh, you know, and and then they're now offering their cigars to brick and mortars so that they can support the brick and mortars. Uh, something that that Brian has as has has said um, that he wanted to do, and and so he's done that and 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 move forward. Uh, so you know, there's there's a, quite a few of them there. If you go online and you and you type in cigar clubs, I mean, you're going to get all kinds of them. I mean, the eight that I put down on my list today was Stogie Burger, Provada Cigar Club, International Cigar Club of the Month, Southern Cigar Company, Cigar of the Month Club, uh, Rare Cigar Club, CigarClub.com, and Original Premium Cigar Club. So there's, a, <laughs> that's a mouthful. Uh, there's there's definitely, a, uh, I, this business, uh, I, I, these, these businesses, uh, uh, 
you know, there's a lot for a lot of B&Ms and for a lot of the cigar manufacturers to really, uh, you know, rake up from this, uh, you know, from this pandemic. I mean, this is this is something that uh, that I think that a lot of cigar manufacturers can go, you know, well, why not have an online presence ourselves right or or have a store or have a uh co-op store you know get with other people and just have the store you know uh available um i mean i i like i said i still like to walk in my brick and mortar shops and, and enjoy the, the camaraderie with my fellow cigar uh leaf brothers and sisters and 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 talk about life and things of that nature but you know when it comes down to you know sometimes you you have to well, you know, like here in Texas with this pandemic, I mean, we we are the red nose uh, of the country. I mean, people are, you know, Texas is like the the hotbed <laughs> for COVID, and 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 uh, you know, so right now, yeah, I, I'm back to limiting my time at the cigar lounge. I'm picking up the cigar club subscriptions and ordering my stuff from there. Uh, if I can, uh, a lot of stores have transitioned to online, so I, I do that curbside pickup, but. Again, I think these guys are great. They're they're great for the industry. Um, I, I, you know, I, I believe that they'll get if they're not already better, they'll get even much more uh, um, wide, you know, larger uh, yeah. in the in the coming years. And I also think that the concept of twenty twenty one being cigar having uh, cigar clubs be popular and all that type stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that. Um, a lot of the brick and mortars, the, the those B and M's are uh, uh, that could be like their next pivotal move in their first step to becoming online uh, right. as well. Um, there and I uh, certainly think that that will be something that will be popular. Wonder wondering if that's going to be like a trend thing. I think it'll last post COVID for sure. Um, mm -hmm. and then like everything else, the market will get flooded right quick with them via the brick and mortars and doing that there. Cause at the end of the day, it's about selling sticks, but you know, uh, cooler, uh, sticks will prevail. The wow factor of what you get in the club will have to prevail. And if the brick and mortar thinks that they're just going to stick five sticks in a bag and ship them out for a discounted price, that'll last for a little bit, but people will chase some of the wow factor. What do you think, oh, yeah. Nelson? It's it, it's already happening. Yeah. Um, you know, you're like the Nostradamus of the cigar industry. No, because it's a, <laughs> you, you know me, Joe. I'm I'm deep in the industry. I'm I'm a, the, the cigar hunter, right? I'm always looking. I'm chasing, right? Whatever, whether it's negative or positive, I'm, I'm a chaser. And one thing I have seen as an ancillary thing is a lot of brick and mortars are definitely doing, um, like cigar of the month clubs. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, but see, they got to be careful. They got to be very careful because you can't put whatever the version of the bargain bin is in that cigar club. Right. Unless it becomes non-regionally specific. So, for example, we here in the Northeast, Drew, might have a little bit more access to the Dunburton Tobacco and Trust than you do. Right. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. have more access to some of the other stuff that we don't. Right? right. So once right. you're online, those arguments go away. But I can see a lot of brick and mortar cigar shop owners throwing the bargain sticks in there and blowing them out. And then that <laughs> wow factor goes away quicker and the demand right. will go down and then away you go. Right. You know what I mean? But they that's up for them. However, right. they want to run their business. Any predictions? on uh some of the bigger companies i have a few it's funny you say that i you know i thought about first company that popped on my mind is drew estate right because they're huge but and i'm not knocking drew estate but i just i don't see a lot of new like new like that wow factor you're talking about joe like i just don't there's a they have wows right but, sure like new wows, like new innovative stuff. I, I think that's what's what's lacking with a company like that. So 
it's funny. I do feel like, and, and we were trying to define boutiques earlier, but it's funny that at least, you know, we, we're still waiting for some of uh, Joe's stuff, but, you know, Drew and I have kind of focused on what's kind of being dubbed as, as the, the boutiques. Um, I don't know if Alec Bradley falls really falls in there, but yeah, I, that's a great question. I, I, I just, I don't know. Are the big guys just right, you know, riding their laurels that they already have or, do they have something up their sleeve for 2021? I, I mean, I, I haven't heard anything, but that, that's an awesome question. No, yeah. I mean, like, you know, like, I mean, I don't consider like Cloud Aura like freaking like a boutique. You know what I mean? And Alec Bradley for sure is not boutique, right? right? There. Uh, I, I know that Alec Bradley will have some super cool positive vibes, like I said. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm looking forward to see the progression. If La Aurora gets in some of those Nicaraguan type stuff there, right? And, and and who's been known to have some super cool tasty sticks, right? And 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 whatnot. So but I look at okay, like, you know, it's pretty easy to say, you know, like like like, you know, soccer, of course, right? And and and, and Noel Rojas, we we're all super fans, obviously, like like that's unanimous. But like, what about like like an aging room? Or People who really haven't made noise, but they did make a little noise, like an EP Carrillo, or yeah, or uh, ugh, uh I'm waiting oh, for right. Leva. I'm waiting for Leva to come up with something. That, like, that like, 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 and the uh, pledge. Those, those were pretty popular this year from Carrillo. So, yeah, oh yeah, I mean, you're, you're you're right. Yeah, like you know what I mean. But like you know, like I, you know. I really think like EP like if I were to make like some of the bigger companies right like I would love to see like Oliva come up with something like super cool. You know what I mean? Like yeah. super cool. Like like hyped up like Milano cool. You know what right. I mean? Like where I think they need it. Right? They can only they can only ride the Milano so long. Yeah, but I mean again, it's, it's time it, it's definitely time. It, it's numbers. Time to... It's numbers, right? I, you know, and and you know, it, it it they're they're selling sticks. They're sought after. They're doing their thing. The sales reps are order takers at this point, right? The, you can't really you can't really say, hey, this is new and 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 there, right? Um, you know, they've done some stuff outside technology wise to give experience to the consumer and doing that there. But some things like, you know, so, but then again, you know, maybe they're sitting back and, and looking at like, you know, hey, like, you know, Roman and Julieta tried to do some stuff and kind of like, eh, and, and, and not saying that Roman and Julieta sales are down at all, um, you know, comparatively. But, you know, I'd like to see a lever in that mix to do something. We know Monte Cristo has taken some bold steps. And created some some new stuff, right? Over the past year year or so, eighteen months or so, if you want to stretch that out, right? Um, you know, Arturo Fluente is ri riding out some of their stuff. You look at J.C. Newman, right? They had a little bit of a repackaging, re reblending of the Polar Del Mar, right? Yeah. You know, uh, if I'm pronouncing that right, if not, I apologize, right? And, and it's like, okay, yeah, cool, but like, what about like an aging room? Like what? What right. about what about an aging room? I mean, you know, uh, they were what number one cigar last year, right? With that, uh, what is it? The, the uh, Undo Straight Quattro. Yeah, I was I was doing yeah. the uh, Undo Straight Quattro. Right? <laughs> Sign with, language. With, yeah, with with, <laughs> with 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 the with the aging room Quattro, right? Uh 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 uh. You know, and then you know, um, twenty eighteen stick was EP Carrillo. The encore, right? The, with, the, the, with the majestic, um, you know. What about LFD? Like you can't count. Ah, like, uh, the bull. Uh, like, like, what about LFD back in in in, in twenty seventeen? Like, I'm not saying that they would be, you know, uh, the they probably would 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 be in that mix to look out for, for sure, right? My father, yeah, you know. I don't really expect. Them to really move too much, right? They they they're dealing with the um, acquisition of the Fonseca brand, right? Yeah. And Fonseca smokers are like they're they're an older breed, right? And you know they might not be turned on to the current version of the Fonseca, 
right? So, like, you know, they got to deal with that. So I'm, like, kind of like, ah, maybe, maybe not, right? Uh, Oliva, I mentioned there. Um, you know, I don't know. What, what about what about Padron? Padron, yeah. I, cons- I considered Padron. Like, and, like you know, yeah, I, like, I, like Padron, like, like other than an anniversario, whatever, right? What are you gonna do? Squeeze in the edge, you get the forty, the fifty, the sixty. We do like yeah. the forty-five, like, uh, like what, what, well, you know, they had what a couple years ago that Damaso, the Connecticut one, that that's right. So, like, you know, they made some yeah. moves over there, and that was a good stick. It's sought after. It's sold, it sells it, where, where, wherever I know here in the Northeast, right? So, like, what about Padron? Like, are they gonna, like, you know, so these big guys, you know. The, the bigger companies have a little bit more sit and wait time, right? Yeah. Because they have stock. It was a, let's say it was a down year. I mean, cigar sales are up. Cigar imports into the U.S. are up, right? So year over yep. year, they're up. Um, cigar shops could be down, right? So, you know, you got some distribution and inventory things going on. Cigar factories were down during COVID. They weren't running at at capacity, right? I mean, layup. You gotta throw CLE in there. You know Christian. <laughs> you know Christian's gonna come sure, up with something. Yeah. Like you know oh, what yeah. I mean? Just right. from uh, us talking to Christian or 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 or, or Raul, and and you know that 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 they're gonna throw some 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 sticks in that mix there. Yeah. Um. You know. It, it's it's interesting, Joe, because I, I don't know if you'll agree, but I mean, obviously, I, I, I don't think we can debate that cigar smoking has become even more popular in like the last three to five years. Right. But I think COVID, I think if we start looking into next year, you're going to see that there's there was another like spike in people. I mean, I, I, I'm a, a side effect of that, of COVID, uh, where cigar smoking has gone up. And I think it's an, the reason I say it's an interesting time, I, I think if I was a brand, I'd be looking at that, you know, because there are people who smoke cigars and there are cigar smokers, right? Yep. And I think the population of cigar smokers, people who really give a shit about what they're smoking, I think is, has increased slightly during COVID. And if I was a brand, I would definitely be looking at, you know, what is it that I can do to attract that audience? Right. Right. So, like, again, just to recap, I'd be interested. I think, like, Olive is going to be a brand to watch out for. Um, you know, uh, uh, LFD, La Flora Dominicana, uh, La Aurora. Um, Padron's going to do something. Yeah. They're, they're going to, they're gonna, you know, because you can't, you, you know, if you sit, you get bored, right? And if we have, we have more time to sit collectively as a company yeah we have to deal with other things that covid has 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 there but like you know what about what about uh grand habano i'd throw him in there he ain't gonna he ain't gonna freak he's gonna come up with two three four sticks right and 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 and, and make some moves too so i think I, i think the faster we get to some set of a remote normalcy or at least a progression towards normalcy we're gonna see an influx we're gonna have distribution problems no question right Right. we're gonna have we're gonna have (laughs) a good problem to have we're gonna have we're gonna have logistical and distribution problems all over the place if you just follow that's why the boxing the 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 bouncing ball business wise no question but we're gonna have a boatload of creativity from a lot of brands, you know, what about crowned heads? You know, I know I told you guys to prepare five. I'm giving like 15. Sorry. No, right? that's fine. You know what I mean? But, but like, I, I wanted the Stogie Geeks uh, who are listening and you guys as, as, as host, right, to just start right. thinking about that. Because I want to be able to go back when we have whatever version of the IPCPR um, or PCA show. And say, wow, like we guessed a boatload of those companies as a podcast, which, you know, which which people might have thought was dormant because of social media and influences and all of that stuff. All focusing on that because of COVID. 
Yeah, but I, you, yeah. you know, you said something, Joe, that really triggered me um, in a positive way. Uh, you know, these companies like a Padron, I'll just I'll pick on Padron for a second, right? They can't live off their just their name because of what I just said, right? The fact that you have more pe more um, people who enjoy cigars, but you know, care about what they're smoking. You can't just rest on your laurels if you're a Padron because, yeah, sure, for for a little bit of time, you'll live off your brand. But if you don't do anything new and fresh, more people are caring about that wow factor you were just talking about, Joe, mm -hmm. than, than ever in the past, I would say. And if companies like a Padron, even in Arturo Fuente, although I think they're good at always coming out with new stuff, but all these companies, they, they have to think about, you know, my audience is changing I have people yeah. that are more interested in what they're smoking than just smoking a cigar. Um, I, I think they have to be careful in, in what they're doing and, and not just to write on their name. But I, but I don't think they have to be too careful because although we look at it from a Stoy Geek's perspective there, there is a boatload of smokers who are brand loyal and you're not going to move them off of Padron. Or oh, you're yeah, not going to move them off of Arturo Fluente. They're just they're, that's that's where they're at, and that's what they do, and that's super cool too, right? I mean, you know, it's their journey ultimately, right? Um, yeah, that's a good point. You know, but at the end of the day, if you look at you know if you look at like an like an like an economic factor or a business factor, like. You know, there are some staples within the industry, right? You know, Microsoft, although Windows, you got to reboot, and there's some O365 freaking kooky things that are going on. And I truthfully think that, like, G Suite is, you know, um, 10 times better than, than O365, but it's a staple, and it's there to stay, right? And right. there are so many companies that try to be like a Microsoft like, for example, this week, very popular in stock news, Salesforce, right? Salesforce yeah. buys Slack to compete and now have a platform, a uh, combined platform to go against, like, Microsoft Teams, right? And so right. drifting away but proving a point is that, like, you know, you can be a Padron. I think it's cool that you come up with something new, but it better be freaking good. And the bar right. is set higher than some of the, if you want to categorize them in a boutique or some of the small batch that can just blow out sticks yeah you know i'm gonna i'm gonna i just wanted to share my my thought with you on this is sure. that i have a list of cigar companies that i already know that they're just sitting around and i know this uh people in the industry know this and so they're just gonna roll out with their 10th anniversary stick their whatever right. anniversary stick they're gonna rebrand and repackage whatever you know stick they already have on the shelf. We we can kind of guess what what companies those are, uh, you know. But uh, you know there is gonna be a fall of cigars uh, as far as I mean. There's gonna be a lot of stuff available to us like once this pandemic thing is done. Um, uh, logistic wise, yeah, you're right. We're gonna definitely have an issue. I mean, not that you're right. You're correct in that. We're going to have an issue with that because right now all logistic companies are going to be focusing on getting this COVID vaccine out to everybody. So with that, I mean, and in just getting all the countries involved in this process back online, importing and whatnot, and going through customs and stuff like that, it's just going to be it's going to be a little bit of a jam, a log jam um, mm -hmm. with that. But yeah, when it comes to companies like Rocky Patel, Perdomo. And, um, you know, Arturo Fuentes and Padron. And, you know, I, I think of those companies that they're just, you know, they, they have enough, uh, success, not that they have enough success, they have successes. And so, therefore, they can just kind of float this time. Um, but at the same time, I do know there's some things behind those companies that are happening and there will be emerging once all this, you know, dust settles with COVID. Um and and I and I know that right now they're all thinking about the logistics of it and how that's going to play in uh, an important factor. So um, my my hedge is on those companies that they'll probably end up just you know letting everything ride out. And it may not be until 2022 when they actually decide to go ahead and release 
uh, some of the newer offerings in their portfolio. And again, I'm, I, mm-hmm. and I'm, that's just from talking with some people on the inside and just kind of, you know, conversations, uh, nothing secretive, nothing that I'm going to get blasted for. It's just, or we're going to get blasted for. It's just that these are the conversations that are there with these larger, what I call con- conglomerates, including DE, the DE system. I mean, you know, Jesus, you know, like, as I said before, they got a, a portfolio of 26 different brands, 27 different brands. <laughs> right. That right. monster in itself, you know, it, it takes, a, it takes, it's going to take a lot. And, you know, I know they have done some internal pivoting, restructuring, uh, you know, sales and things of that nature. Nothing really major like uh, Miami uh, cigar, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's my, that's, that's my spin on that. Right. What do you think? Uh, about, of, what do you think about uh, crown heads? Uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, um, I, I, I believe that, the, uh, John will continue, uh, you know, developing and, and, and putting out the cigars out there. Just like, uh, I was, I was listening to a couple of, uh, people, uh, around the Pete Johnson forum, you know, they, you know, he's got some stuff in the works as well that he wants to get out there, but you know, when is it going to be a great time to really get that out there where everybody can, you know, um, can can get you know can can enjoy it and uh you know logist i guess logistics are playing a part of that too it's slowing down that process mm-hmm. um but yeah I, I think uh john and guys like john and uh huber and uh pete johnson and uh you know they're they're, they're just now figuring out those cogs and and once they get past it um i think that their stuff will be available to us here probably i would say march uh of this coming up year Hmm. Now, before we wrap up, uh, yeah. there has been a not to capacity because of COVID in the fields and in the factories and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And when we, when they get ready to ramp up and discuss and create blends, my final question is, How's that going to taste? Right. And is it going to be like what they expected? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, 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 you know, it's like businesses are now making commitments. You know, we're not going to fly until X and, you know, no matter what. And, and you know, that keeps getting pushed out. Or, and, you know, we're going to work from home or limited capacity in the office till X. And that gets pushed out and changed weekly or daily the rules Unless you're Christian with his own plan. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good point, right? That's a, that's a very good point. You know, C- Christian, like, uh, although on different levels, like uh, a Steve soccer doesn't sleep, right? <laughs> right? You know what I mean? And, and, and brain's always working and, and, and stuff like that. But you know, that's a good point. Like, but how's that going to taste? Like, yeah. you know, is it going to be a crazy, is it going to lead to more practices within the field of less maintenance tastes better, less maintenance is bad? Um, you know. Uh, uh, so you're talking about the tobaccos that are in the ground, or the tobaccos that have already been either or. I mean, like you're not either either or. You can we could go. We I mean, we could spend another hour and talk about the stuff that's in in the in resting, which yeah, now the, which now been resting for historically five years has became six years. Right. I, I think it, is I think it better? Both, Did Joe. it age out? Is it not all those factors are going to be? Yeah. I, I think it's both, right? If you, if you look at, you're right because there's stuff that's been sitting, right? But there's yeah. also, like I said, I, I I was digging a little bit into Nicaragua. I mean, I, I I admittedly didn't look into DR or Honduras or anything, but you know, they got affected by tons of water. Is that going to positively impact? you know the crops or is that going to that's that's really interesting yeah like uh, i mean yeah. those are all factors that we haven't even thought of yet right and and even in proving my point right when you go back to your office whatever version of your office is there's going to be people who are going to be sick and get stomach viruses right because there's a whole i'm not a plumber right <laughs> although i've <laughs> i've i've, I've done some maintenance around the house right you know i'm not a plumber but there's there's a thing where like in office buildings or in stagnant pipes right there's bacteria that goes in through there and so now we all go rush back to the office 
everybody's back to work. There's a normalcy. Let's say it's 2022, and you get like there are office buildings that like were vacant for all this time, and then there's issues from a bacteria perspective. There's issues from a maintenance perspective, right? How is that going to affect that aspect as well? That to me is very is is going to be interesting. I mean, how many people have we interviewed? Tim Wong comes to mind when he was um, going to announce the year of the ox that this year, and then he postponed that. And then when he postponed that because of COVID and wasn't the, the right time to launch his product, this and that, it's going. It, it's been sitting, right? The product's been sitting. How's it going to taste? Is it going to be originally like you thought it would? It's going to be better. It's going to be worse. It's going to have to pivot around it. Are they going to have to change the internal process? Of the blend because it's not like what they originally thought it would be like all those. That's so interesting. I'm just throwing it out there because no, but it's real because that's how my brain works. Like, how is this stuff going to freaking taste? And is it going to be better, worse, same, cool, not cool? You mentioned the floods of the field. I mean, we interviewed someone here on Story Geeks, um, an older gentleman called Richard Carlton Hacker, who wrote a book. Uh, it's the ultimate cigar book. And in one of his chapters, he talks about, like, the fields being flooded and whatnot, and there, and it was for the original Opus X blend. So, and wow. we, all, we all know how that story went and, and how that's sought after as well and stuff like that. So They did okay. You know, yeah, you know. <laughs> so it's like, it's like you know, it, 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 you have legitimate logistics business-wise other than, you know, give us our wow factor and give us our label and we'll talk about it, but those are all going to have to be addressed as well. And I wonder how that's going to turn out. What's super exciting is it's always a chapter that will be determined for all of us. You know? So yeah. that's that's the way that goes. Nelson, anything else you want to add before we wrap up? No, I mean, you know, this is what, the second to last episode but you know i'll say it here i mean joe thank you joe and drew thank you for allowing me on the show and you know I, i'm like the redheaded stepchild that got a you know i'm the foster child that got added to the family and so I, am I. I so don't worry don't don't feel bad i sincerely appreciate you guys uh having me on it's it's been an awesome journey i i love this um this is so cool to be able to do this and and the exposure I get to talk to some of the um, the brands, and it's, it's just, just super cool, and I, I sincerely really appreciate it. Mm. Yeah, well, I appreciate it as much as you do, for sure. You know, it's a privilege and an honor to uh, get a chance to 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 be here uh, as well on, on this platform, the super cool platform that Paul created. And, uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, I don't know what Drew is. I think he, uh, he disappeared. I see us. You got nothing. See, you, uh, what, Nelson, you were going in the beginning of the show. What happened? Your computer battery or something like uh, that? I, I lost Wi-Fi. Did it even have? Uh, did you guys even notice? I was. Oh, yeah. Oh, notice. I noticed right away because I see your feed, and, and then I see there's no Drew. But it's it's all good. Uh, I'll talk for a little bit. And if he joins us, cool. If not, then we'll wrap up. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, um, 2020 has certainly been a uh, challenging year for uh, brick and mortars for factories, for anyone really in any industry. Uh, some, some industries have done uh, incredibly well, and uh, other industries are, um, are trying to repivot and, and figure it out. Um, and that's just the whole journey. And, and you know, like I said in the beginning when, when we were having these kind of COVID talks and we were on lockdown, um, I was like, you know, 2020 will forever be a year known, not only in this industry, but in others that will leave scars, uh, you know, scars that pivoted and made us stronger or scars um, that made us turn direction in, in, in business or, um, uh, you know, um, scars that, wow, like this will be a new way of doing business for years to come, even once we pass this um this pandemic that that we're in uh there for sure um but i i i embrace i embrace the change 
I look forward to a, a, a very mm-hmm. strong uh, 2021 um, for the industry. I mean, you know, cigars are up. Um, you know, uh, cigar awareness has certainly been I'm up. I'm back. Cool. I'm back. Cigar awareness has certainly been up. Um, you know, it, it, oh, I think that um, it, it, it's it's going to be super cool for us to sit back and, and watch and see what blossoms into uh, what is to come for uh, 2021. Not only um, for the Story Geeks uh, show and platform, but for the premium cigar industry um, as well, right? Yeah, I mean, I think you're spot on, Joe. I mean, think about it. The show has continued, right? There's always content. Um, In fact, I think you're spot on. I think the cigar industry has, maybe it hasn't financially grown, but it's definitely grown. And I think they're going to reap the benefits of that over the years to come. Um, And I, I think, you know, you said it, I think you just said it about it's changing how we operate and all that. And I, I, I think in a lot of ways in a good way. So um, I, I still feel blessed that with all of this, you know, this show can continue. The, uh, there's more people interested in stogies than, than you know, in, in recent past. Um, it, and that, you know, there's still content. There's still an interest and still activity around the cigar industry, even with COVID. Right. And, and you know, um, it, it, it's going to be interesting to watch uh, there and, and see, you know, uh, who can recover and restructure uh, there. But um, I predict a lot of uh, collaboration between brands for 2021. Uh, I can predict a little bit of consolidation. Um, consolidation? In, 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 you know, um, looking forward to it. That's all I have to say uh, in regards to that. Uh, next week, uh, will programming note will be our last show for the year because we will not do Story Geeks on Christmas or uh, New Year's Day. Uh, or is that Eve? I don't know. It's it's one of those. Um, they are wise. New Year's Day. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's on a Friday. Yeah, yeah. So Christmas yeah. and New Year's Day. Uh, fall there. So next week will be our last show of uh, 2020. And um, Nelson, Drew, and I uh, have a couple of uh, surprises uh, for you, Story Geeks. So you definitely want to tune in to that show. And then I believe we'll be back the first week of January, which I don't have a calendar in front of me, but it's a Friday. So um, yeah. unless we uh, pivot to another day, uh, that's to be determined, Story Geek. So you want to um, definitely. Uh, stay close to us on the website, stogiegeeks.com. Uh, email all of your complaints to Drew at stogiegeeks.com. Right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, uh, and yeah, um, it's it's uh, it's crazy. Next episode will be at Story Geeks episode 350. 350. 350. Holy crap. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> super cool. Uh, Drew. It'll be an ugly sweater. Ugly sweater uh, wearing day next week yeah i usually break out my ugly sweater for that day i might do that i love that everyone has to wear an ugly sweater okay love it. that's right all right so programming and we have to wear wear a hat with a bell on it wear wear your ugly sweater and uh drew thank you for your time and for joining us uh here somebody 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 cut my cord i don't know who did i think one of the cigar (laughs) gods came by and cut my cord real quick i don't Uh, know what happened i got i got dropped out Somehow, surprised a couple of vendors who questioned my integrity didn't come and rush here and cut my cord. Mm. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just stand in the parking lot and scream. Johnny will guys, film uh, me. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? Well, yeah, I sent I sent my coin back in. It was uh. Oh, oh, did you? Oh yeah. Nice. You mailed it back. Oh. Nice. This is a story I'll tell you off air. Wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. if you did, then I will too. <laughs> you know, I yeah. threw away my scissors and cutter, but, uh, oh. you know, um, it's Moving all Moving on. It's I thought we gave those away. Uh, yeah, well, I yeah, you know, but they are not in my little uh, thing in, you know. Okay. Uh, I need a new leather folio too, cause I gotta cross out the logo on this one. 
<laughs> if I haven't uh, been asked to leave. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, Nelson, thank you for joining us Good here. Good to see you guys. Here on uh, a Story Geeks. Story Geeks, I want to thank you for watching and listening. Remember, we keep the conversation going all week long. Visit us on StoryGeeks.com. Email all of your complaints to Drew at Story Geeks. Behind every cigar, there's a story worth knowing. Get out there and learn some knowledge. You want to share your story with us? Email Nelson at StoryGeeks.com. Story Geeks, thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Peace.